Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi everyone, Suzanne here. Welcome to my first Tomb Raider 3 playthrough video and also welcome to my 100 subscribers Lara Croft Tomb Raider 3 cosplay. So it's just a very simple cosplay. I have the glasses, my braid, the tank top and the black kind of fingerless gloves. I know hers don't have studs on them, but these are the only ones that I could find. I also know Lara Croft doesn't have pink nail polish, but we'll use our imagination. <laughs> I am actually going to just take off these glasses now because they keep catching the reflection there and also I cannot see a thing out of these glasses. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me for the Tomb Raider 3 playthrough. I am so excited to get into this game. Today's video is just going to be super chill. We're just going to play through Croft Manor, chat a bit and just have a bit of fun. Now, unfortunately, it is absolutely freezing in Ireland today and inside my apartment is absolutely freezing. So. I cannot physically be like this for the rest of the video. So I'm going to put on something that I think is still quite Lara Croft, but will just stop me catching pneumonia. Yeah. I think the leather jacket still looks quite Lara Croft, so we can, we can go with that. <laughs> so as usual, let's just get straight into it. Okay, I'm so excited to get started on this. Welcome back to my humble abode. Feel free to take a look around. Wow. They just, they really, really upped the Croft Manor for Tomb Raider 3. I love it. I love her bed. When I was a kid and I used to play this, I was always like, I want a bed like this when I'm older. That did not happen. Okay, and we have some flares. Um, so yeah, I kind of just wanted to like chat um, a little bit in this video because Craft Manor is kind of just fun and easy to play. Um, but I suppose the main things, this is awesome. Imagine having this as your bath. Um, the main things I just wanted to say were just to remind what I said at the end of Tomb Raider 2, which is that Tomb Raider 3, when I was a kid, was my least favorite Tomb Raider game because I found it so difficult. I used to just play the Croft Manor because I thought it was really cool and I used to play this over and over again, but um, I couldn't actually play the actual game because it was too difficult for me and wow and I found it too dark and things too difficult to see and all of that so yeah I did not ever play much of or complete this game by myself when I was a kid. Uh, okay so I'm going to leave this part of the mansion. If you want to look around Ooh. press and hold the look button then press in the direction you want to look. Thanks Lara. Um, I'm going to leave that part until later on. And hey, it's Winston. Yeah, so I only completed the game twice as an adult. So I don't hugely know this game that well. So it's going to be really fun and interesting to play through it uh, because I really like it playing it as an adult. So let's go in here. Let's get rid of Winston first. Poor Winston. Imagine having this much space. Like, just actually imagine. I say filled with jealousy as I sit in my tiny apartment. Oh my god, he farted. It's so funny. So while we have Winston here, I did promise that I would... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he keeps farting. It's really distracting. Um, I did promise that I would talk a bit about Winston and his backstory. Uh, I'm actually not going to, I'm actually just going to read them out. I'm not going to try and play and read these out at the same time. That is going to be a disaster. So let's take a quick reprieve and talk about Winston. 
So Winston Jeeves is Lara Croft's butler and the second name Jeeves actually came from fans christened the butler Jeeves before they knew what his actual name was. So the team decided to keep that as his second name and then just call him Winston for his first name. So Winston was born on the 7th of February, 1924. And that's actually really close to Lara Croft's birthday, which we know is the 14th of February. So I wonder if they like party together and have a joint birthday or something. That'd be pretty cool. Winston was born in a place called Connessee in Ireland. Now, I'm sure most of you know that I am Irish and I'm from Ireland and I had never heard of that place before and I was like, where is that? So I looked it up and it is actually a fictional place. They made it up, so that makes sense. <laughs> so Winston was a soldier in World War II and he was honorably discharged after he was wounded in battle. He returned from World War II and began working for his father as a gamekeeper on a local estate. So I presume they mean like a large kind of uh, stately home. While working as gamekeeper on this estate, he formed a bond with Lord Henshingly Croft, who we know from my Tomb Raider 1 videos, is Lara Croft's father in the original timeline. There's no Richard Croft, he doesn't exist yet. Her father is Lord Henshingly Croft. And he met Lord Croft while organizing a pheasant shooting excursion. Winston was then specifically requested into service by Lord Henshingly Croft, so I guess he really liked Winston when he met him and was like, please, please come and work at Croft Manor. And so he did and became their butler at Croft Manor. And he used to keep little Lara Croft company while her parents were off on their travels all the time. And so he became kind of like a father to Lara. As we know as well from my Tomb Raider 1 videos, this is not um, the Croft Manor that Lara grew up in. This is not her parents' home in the original mm -hmm. timeline. Her parents have disowned her because of her lifestyle that she's chosen. She's not acting like a proper lady like they wanted her to. So this is a manor that she actually inherited from her aunt and she now lives here. So I wonder if she asked Winston if he wanted to follow her and become her butler at Croft Manor because they had such a close bond. So that's a little info about Winston that I thought was really interesting. And we had his flatulence <laughs> in the background to that little story. And I'm just gonna move on and lock him in the freezer now because the, those sounds of his flatulence are actually making me feel sick. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Come on, Winston. You've had you've had enough today now. Let's go into the kitchen. If you heard that really loud sound, that actually wasn't Winston's flatulence, that was a motorbike. Wow. I would love to have a kitchen like this. Okay, Winston, come on. In the freezer you go. Oh, and I like how they upped the effects. They had like the cold effects in here now that they didn't have in Tomb Raider 2. Oh God, I feel like he's gonna make the meat go bad with all that flatulence in here, but oh well. Ooh. No, you stay in there, Winston. <laughs> Oh, oh, he's fine. He kind of came half out, but went back in. It's all good. Okay, so let's put on some music and maybe a bit of a workout, I think now. Let's go into the gym. Those of you who have been here before, I don't actually run everywhere. When I want to be careful, I walk. Hold down the walk button and walk to the white line. I feel like I'm going to keep cutting her off With when the she walk talks. Down, I won't fall off, 
even if you try to make me. Go on, try it. If a jump is too far for me, I can grab the ledge and save myself from a nasty fall. Walk to the edge next to the white line until I won't go any further. Then press jump, immediately followed by forward, and while I'm in the air, press and hold the action button. Press forward and I'll climb up. Cool. If I do a running jump, I can make a jump like that, no problem. Walk to the edge with the white line until I stop. Then let go of walk and tap backwards to give me a run up. Press forward and almost immediately press and hold the jump button. I won't actually jump until the last minute. Um, I presume I'm just supposed to go okay. to this one. This is a huge jump. So do a running jump exactly as before. Except while I'm in the air, press and hold the action button to make me grab the ledge. Excellent. Thank you, Lara. Or today I should say, thank you, me. <laughs> Try to vault up here. Press forward and hold action. I can't climb up because the gap is too small. But press right and I'll shimmy sideways until there is room. Then press forward and I'll climb right up. Well done. If there's a long drop and I don't want to hurt myself jumping off, I can let myself down carefully. Tap backwards and I'll jump off backwards. Immediately press and hold the action. Next I'll show you my crawl. First, vault onto the block. Now hold down the crawl button. This will make me crouch down. And keep holding it while using the directional buttons to move me through the gap. At the end, turn around and drop me off the ledge. Make sure to keep the action button pressed or I'll fall. Now let go. Okay, it's oops. It's good to refresh these moves. Push forward and hold down the crawl button to make me squeeze into the gap. To get to those really high places, sometimes I'll need to climb. Let's try that now. Walk up to the climbing frame, then press and hold the action button so I'll climb up onto it. While keeping this button pressed, push forward on the directional. Now looking up, you'll see some monkey bars. These look like fun. Press the jump button, Whee. then immediately hold down the action button. To make I, me jump I lost the patience the to listen to her. Now use the directional buttons Talk. to maneuver across. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't let go of the action key, because as soon as you do, I'll let go. I love great. monkey bar swinging. Cool. I love all her new right. moves. Let's sprint. Push forward and hold down the sprint button. When I reach the white line, Press the jump button and I'll perform a diving roll. Okay, let's go. Okay, Ooh. fancy a swim? Do indeed. If I had this indoor gym in my house, I would be so fit. The jump button and the directions move me around. That's my excuse. Okay. Ooh, oh no, I wanted to swan dive. I messed it up. Amazing. Oh, Just use forward, left and right to maneuver around. Right, let's go and play outside. <laughs> let's go and play. Indeed. Okay. So I know there's a button here. That's amazing. I mean, looking at it now, they absolutely upped their game graphics-wise, moves-wise, everything-wise in Tomb Raider 3. I don't actually run everywhere. When I want no, to No, Lara, we already I did walk. that. We're... Hold down the walk no. button and walk to the white line. No, we, are... we already did that. <laughs> um, ooh. Okay, let's see if we can open the treasure room first time. Let's give it a go. Okay. Oh, okay. I just managed to squeeze in under that. Wasn't perfect, but we're in. 
Um, so yeah, Lara's treasure room. So I'm just going to go through the objects for anyone who doesn't know. I'm sure most people do, but if you don't, that is the T-Rex head up there. So they're all little kind of throwbacks to her previous adventures. There is the dagger of Xi'an. If you were following my Tomb Raider 2 playthrough, we just got that. There it is. All safe in our possession. This is the iris that you might recognize if you've played Tomb Raider 4. If you haven't, I won't spoil it for you. This is the Skion, all kind of broken into pieces. It doesn't really look like the Skion, honestly, but it is apparently meant to be the Skion from Tomb Raider 1. Okay, I'm just going to read out a little note from Stella's Tomb Raider site about this artifact because I didn't have a clue what this was. Um, so according to the Tomb Raider's Traveler's Guide, Rich Morton, lead level designer for Tomb Raider 3, confirmed that this gold head is an inside joke. A cross between the gold idol Indiana Jones found at the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark and the face of EDOS producer Mike Schmidt. So there you go, that's the, the gold idol. Um, and I think that's kind of everything of interest in here. It's just Lara's little treasure room. And that has not opened the door. Thank you. <laughs> so we can go back outside now. And I'm going to go up here because I kind of want to do everything inside if you before. If you want to look around, press and hold the look button. Then press in the direction you want to look. Okay, Lara. Because um, I kind of want to just do everything inside before we go outside. So we've opened the attic door. I guess this is where Lara Croft watches TV. That, that is so her. I can imagine her just sprawled on a leopard print, kind of chaise long, just watching TV. That's extremely Lara Croft. So one of these books is pushable. Ah, there it is. But I think I'm still going to have to adjust the brightness levels of this game. Um, <laughs> Just because Tomb Raider 3 is so, so dark and I don't want people to be watching it, kind of going, can't see anything. So yeah, hopefully I can get that fixed. Oh God, the flares don't last long in this game, do they? I think it is quite bright already, but I will try and make it a bit brighter, I think. flares do I have left? Oh, four. We're fine. So as far as I remember, there's nothing in the attic. It's just empty. So now we've got the race downstairs. Let's see if I can make it first time. Come on. 
We can do it. No, I got stuck. Okay. Um, don't run and jump here or you'll hit your head, which is not helpful. So, no. Oh, no. I'm messing this up so bad. <gasps> no. Okay, let's call that one the practice run. Shake it off. Let's go again. Shake it off. Let's keep going. I mean, as long as we don't get stuck on things this time, we will make it. Ooh, okay. Oh no. I am so bad at getting over the banisters. Yes. More flares, exactly what I needed. Thank you. This part always scared me so much as a kid because I thought that these were piranhas. <laughs> oh, I thought they were piranhas. This would be amazing to sit here and read though. So beautiful. I mean, that's a very Lara Croft thing though, right? To have pet piranhas. <laughs> I think she'd find that quite cool. Okay, let's get the dark, creepy swimming over with as soon as possible. But no, they're not piranhas, they're just harmless, um, like, pet fish. Oh, where is it? There it is. Cool. And I don't think that there is anything else here, pickup-wise. Okay, and now that we have the racetrack key, let's head to the racetrack. So excited. I both love and loathe the the quad bike. That's a wall, Suzanne. Look where you're going. Um, yeah, I mean, I find vehicles fun, but I do find them extremely difficult to control. So, mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> And I guess she got a new fountain since the last time. She got rid of the fish thing and put a horse there instead. I liked the fish. Hey, I like the look of this. To jump on, walk up to the vehicle and press the action button. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it wasn't working for a second. So let's, oh, that's reverse. How do I go forward? Ah, there we go. Okay, oh my God, this is so fun. <laughs> I'm such a bad driver, I don't care. Oh, this is actually kind of difficult to drive this on the keyboard. I won't lie. Ooh. The levels with vehicles in this are just going to be so fun playing on the keyboard. <laughs> cool. I'm assuming that's a terrible time and that's okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't have to be the best. 
Uh, how do I get off? There we go. Okay. So now that we've done that. And now, of course, we cannot play Croft Manor without using the corner bug. For anyone who doesn't know, the corner bug can be used in any corner in a Tomb Raider game just to kind of cheat the corner like the game gets confused and then just pops you up onto the ledge above you so you can use it to take shortcuts or to get to cool places that you're not supposed to be <laughs> so the roof is pretty similar as in tomb raider 2 the only difference up here that a lot of people have found and been like what the hell is that is this weird texture here. It's like, it looks like a water texture and then the rest of it's a red square. I looked these up because I was super curious, what are these? And you can find a few more throughout the Tomb Raider Tree game. And basically what they are is, they are kind of, I don't know, would you say like balancing textures or something along those lines? So basically, that texture has to exist for all the other textures to kind of work together. Um, and yay, we're on the balcony. Um, so yeah, that texture has to exist for all the other textures and graphics to work. So they need to put that kind of square somewhere. And so for instance, nobody is supposed to be up on the roof. You can only get up there by cheating. So that's why they put it up there. So cool that you can look in the windows as well. I love little details like that. And just in case people were wondering, you actually can't go outside the gate in this Croft Manor. You just can't get up there and grab that. And I'm pretty sure that is because you actually end this Croft Manor by leaving through the gate. So they didn't want you to be able to bug your way to the other side um, and ruin that kind of detail. <laughs> Okay, and last but not least, the assault course. I I am not even going to attempt the best time on this assault course. We'll be here all day. I'm going to do my usual slow poke way. I'm I'm happy with that. What's this? Okay. Is it slide or run and jump? Oh, okay. I do not remember this obstacle course at all. I think it's pretty similar to the last one, just a little bit added on at the end. Ooh, sidey fronty jumps. Oops. And there. Oh. Oh, she hit her head, but I mean, she got it. She got it, so it's fine. I have spent the last week making notes on the Tomb Raider 3 story. So I'm really excited to get into that because as with Tomb Raider 2, the Tomb Raider 3 story is one that I did not understand. Um, as I said, I never, I don't think I ever actually got past the India levels in Tomb Raider 3 as a kid. Um, those big giant statues with all the swords, I could never ever get past them. They were too difficult. Um, so I never knew or the story or saw the cutscenes before that. And then 
playing it as an adult. I just, ooh, that was, that was actually a good, um, good aim. Uh, playing it as an adult, I just did not understand the cutscenes or the story at all. So I'm really excited to go through it and really understand the story and who all the characters are. And now we have guns. This is really exciting. How did Winston get out of the freezer? Sorry, Winston. Did I get them all? Yeah, you're like a father to me, Winston, but I shoot you and lock you in the freezer. So, sorry. My bad. Okay, and we can sprint now, I think. And then, woohoo. Oh, well, anyway, it was a really bad run of the assault course, but it's fine. I was too busy talking. Okay, and that's kind of everything to do in Craft Manor. I absolutely love the Tomb Raider 3 Craft Manor. It was my favorite Craft Manor as a kid and I used to play it over and over again and then just not play the main game. <laughs> I'm so, so excited to get into this game. I'm going to try and get a couple of levels recorded this week and get some videos out. I'm actually extremely busy um, last week and this week, so I'm trying to get as many videos done as I can. I'm just not sure how many I can get done, but I will try my best to get the first couple of levels done this week because I'm just so excited to get into it and I feel like a lot of you are really excited to get into it. It's a lot of your favorite game and that makes me really excited, so. I cannot wait to see you all in India and the first Tomb Raider 3 game video. Will we go, Winston? Will we head off on our adventure? Yeah? I feel like I'm talking to him like a dog or something, I don't know. Okay, bye. Bye. He doesn't seem that sad to see us go. Now is time for our third adventure.